so hello everyone and uh, welcome to this second episode of being a qualityist where on behalf of kimpro foundation we talk to some leading quality professionals in india and soon around the globe in our first episode uh, last month we spoke to dr parag prindani of vocart hospital who was uh, the first qualityist of the month in may this year as you know and if you didn't know i'm i'm now informing you that the term qualityist was coined by dr g m juran in his book a world history of quality and in the same book he also commented that the 21st century will be the century of quality and um, we are as 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 quality professionals trying to seize the opportunity trying to make an impact and this is a humble attempt from our part in trying to uh, make the quality profession a little bit more inclusive and popular uh giving our profession a name was one of his key suggestions and therefore that that is where the qualitist name came in and this suggestion of course in india and around uh, the world has been embodied and evangelized by uh, by uh, dr suresh dola uh, our guru and uh, he along with kimpro foundation one of his ventures he's been uh, for the last few years he's been trying to identify recognize and promote quality talent all around us and today we'll be talking to one such role model quality professional a true qualityist and um, you know in a minute we'll get to get to speak to the guest today we are of course delighted to see the interest in quality um, as we start the session those who are on linkedin or youtube give me a shout out on where you are from and what brings you here what would you like to ask our guest today um be active uh, we will we will, of course are trying to build this community and every bit uh, of effort from you and all of us does help right so the but there are uh, of course before we get into the show there are some key announcements um, or rather information that i want to share if you like the idea of being a qualityist uh, and it is intriguing and you want to know more uh, please check kimpro.com uh, i believe of course you can see the website name on the screen and um, we will also leave links in the comment section later on as well i would strongly urge you to consider applying for one uh, becoming a qualityist and uh, that will help you have a clear identity about the profession and yourself right so i now invite uh, my partner in crime today balaji reddy the founder of the deming uh, forum of india and a true qualityist himself uh, and he will introduce the guest and initiate the session welcome balaji morning morning anshuman it's always a pleasure being here and uh, uh, before i proceed at uh, i think this is the first time we are meeting after that wonderful talk you gave at uh, the qci national quality promotion board on quality 4.0 so i'd urge anybody here watching this to please watch that video too anshuman was amazing uh, so great to see you here anshuman and of course uh, another exciting uh, Uh, interview today i think last month uh, it was great to interview uh, dr parag rindani uh, you know the qualityist in his own right and he was a, you know we call him the you know the reluctant qualityist right <laughs> but here we have uh, uh, you know mr suman sood uh, again um, my inter- my interaction with him has been mostly you know during the qualtech awards and uh, i think the audience must know that you know when you're being a, a judge or a Or, a, or an examiner, I can tell you this: the excitement that we get to, you know, that builds up when we are listening to presentations by Titan, because invariably, invariably, they land up in the innovation category and they they take us by surprise every single time. And the innovations are also worth, you know, uh, and the presentations they make, of course, are amazing. And if I'm not mistaken, even the quality fables, I think they've been winning quite a few, uh, uh, you know, awards there. so it's always it'll be great to interact with uh, mr sumanth uh, now just just to give you a brief background about uh, mr sumanth uh, what what really is heartening to note okay is that he's a graduate from pure science and you know he really gives us engineers uh, you know something to think about because uh, you know we have this uh, we think we're on a pedestal you know <laughs> we engineers and here's a person from pure science giving us a run for our money and I mean it in a good sense, you know. Uh, uh, we should never forget that we engineers are applied scientists, and we rely a lot on pure science for all of the knowledge that we need. And in fact, it's no surprise that in Japan they have a Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers. So here we are. 
So he's a graduate from pure science uh, with 34 years of experience. Okay, 34 golden years, and I think 28 of them have been at Titan. And he began, of course, um, as a senior production manager, but now he's head of the, he's heading the innovation department, all right? And not only has he been with production, he's been with production, category management, systems, corporate communications, sustainability, and of course, uh, business excellence. Uh, he's also acquired multiple qualifications, all right, from both uh, Indian and international universities. So he's not just been sitting on his haunches waiting for things to happen. He's made things happen. And in the areas of sustainability, innovation, and design thinking. Wow. I mean, Mr. Sumant, it is such a pleasure to have you here. And I think even during our interactions at Qualtech, we've always been, you know, talking about how does Titan manage to, uh, you know, come up with these innovations every single time. Uh, just to let you know, we'll have a, a live with the audience, live uh, question and answer session towards the end. So please uh, hold your questions okay till for about half an hour uh, or else you know i could miss some of the questions that could be asked early on right so let's begin uh, mr sumant it's good to have you here and uh, uh since i began with this innovation thing okay i mean i can tell you this okay um i remember my first watch that i that i, I was gifted in my life was a tissot and you know the swiss uh, watch uh, and and always we we always grew up saying you know quality and watchmaking go hand in hand literally right and but uh, I just want to ask you something here because quality and watchmaking are synonymous but innovation invention you know these we always think a little so how did you bring this culture right into this uh, when you're talking about a traditional manufacturing and process uh, focused company how did you bring this innovation culture into Titan? Could you please uh, just let throw some light on that? Thank you, Balaji. Thank you, Anshuman. And good morning to all of y'all who are watching this show. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, Titan started off as a watch company, and uh, in '93 uh, they wanted to they diversified when they started the pilot plant for jewelry, and uh, there were very few of us who came from the jewelry background. I think there were a handful, there were about five or six of us. The rest were all people who came in from the watch division, who were transferred from the watch division. So uh, there was a lot of quality that they were bringing in. You know, So they have, they were familiar with the quality standards. And for us, Patrick, you know, would come from the jewelry business. It was a shock because uh, let me, buy, we used to look at things, you know, in a 10x uh, loop. Uh, they would start looking at quality from a 20x microscope there. You know, so it was a 10 times jump on to quality. And uh, in the initial days, I remember when uh, we launched Tanish. In fact, uh, I don't know if you, uh, I'll let you share with you that yesterday Tanish uh, celebrated 25 years of existence. You know, so we launched Tanish 25 years back. But in the days, you know, when we were in the pilot plant, the pilot plant, we were in a small uh, room inside the watch factory. And uh, I think the first product that we wanted to launch were uh, watches, you know, and gold watches. And we were making bracelets. And while I joined in March, I think we accepted the first two bracelets, which got accepted, were in the month of August. So you can just imagine that April, May, June, July, we were making. And every time we used to make, it used to go for quality inspection and it used to get rejected. And when we were looking at quality, uh, and at that time, our MD was Mr. Desai, Zaks Desai. And when he used to explain quality, so he would talk about aesthetic, you know, he would talk about form, and he would talk about functionality. So if you have a strap, he would take a strap and then hold it down and say, every link should be uniformly free. You cannot have a link which is tight. You know, so those were the aspects that he was you know, used to convey with us and we'd, we'd go to his office, he would pick up a uh, dolphin. I remember he had a dolphin and he would say, it's just feel, you know, how it's smooth. It's absolutely smooth. You know, so it was all about aesthetic. It was all about feeling. It was all about functionality. Just, and all these things were, you know, taught to us. And that's how we started. Uh, that's where the quality uh, move came, came in. Later on, I think uh, a lot of people, when we did the business excellence movement, uh, 
a lot of assessors used to come and ask, okay, but why aren't you doing a Six Sigma and all? And then it used to be difficult to explain to them, you know, that these were not automated processes. These were manual processes that we were doing. And uh, but coming from there today, we have a lot of automation in our factory. Uh, if you come today to a factory, you'll be surprised because it looks uh, more like an automobile factory. There's a lot of automation, robots and all working there. So we've tried to automate all extent. And today in the factory, we also practice Lean Six Sigma. So it's been a journey that has taken place. No, wow. fantastic. Wow. I think, I think, yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Suman, for a, for a uh, wonderful, um, you know, in a way, a summary of Titan's journey as well, right? So, and like Balaji said, generally, we all kind of believe that quality and watchmaking is synonymous, but you have gone way beyond watchmaking as a company. But coming to you, right? So the first response was a little bit more about the company, but we also wanted to focus more on your journey. And you've been, you know, a quality professional for years now, and of course, dabbled in related fields as well. And for our audience, and particularly from a quality point of view, uh, we wanted uh, to know more so, about you. So I got into it probably by accident. Uh, so actually, you know, in the first seven years, jewelry division never made money. Hmm. We were uh, operating at a loss. And uh, uh, in 2000, we had a new uh, with, uh, chief operating officer, Jacob Korean. And uh, at that time, uh, till about uh, the time he came, the factory was very isolated from the front end of the business. Uh, we never knew what was going on in the stores. And uh, everybody assumed that we knew. So he actually brought us closer to the stores, you know, so that he said that you people should have an idea of what's happening at the stores and uh, that we should start going to the stores and understanding what the customers are saying. So that was the first. Secondly, we decided to implement lean. Now, our factory was, uh, you know, because watches is produced in batches. So when our factory was conceived, created and all, it was made for uh, batches and it was actually conceived for us to export jewelry, make and export jewelry. So our batch quantities was one design, 500 numbers, uh, you know, one, one design, 1,000 numbers and all. And when we were doing lean, uh, we were working with uh, consultant Dilip Somaya and associates. Uh, there was a lot of learning that happened at that point of time. Uh, I had a lot of arguments with him, but uh, I could not prevail. And I think those were the learnings that we had. And... Uh, we turned around our factory. I turned around our factory, meaning we reconfigured our factory over three days, the Diwali holidays, to move from batch production to single fruit. You know, so uh, that was a journey that we took. And uh, uh, he had also said that some of us need to eliminate our jobs. Now, I was uh, in production manufacturing downstream, and uh, he said the planning department needs to be merged with the uh, production department. You cannot have planning separately and production separately. And uh, so the, uh, my colleague was supposed to eliminate, but he came to me and he said, Sumant, I don't want to eliminate my job. Will you eliminate your job? So I said, OK, fine, I'll eliminate my job. And that was December uh, 2000. So uh, that was it. and. Uh, and I said, by December, end of December, I will eliminate my job. From 1st January, I, I'll take whatever else is there. So our then CEO, Jacob Korean, he took me aside one and he said, listen, Sumant, I want you to head business excellence for the jewelry division. At that time, I had no clue what business excellence was. You know, and uh, because we were in the factory. And then he said, he told me a story. He said, you know, I'm an engineer. My father's an engineer. And uh, he said, but my father understood the concepts while I have, you know, mostly mugged up all the concepts. <laughs> so I don't want this business excellence, you know, like to be an ISO 14, 9000 certificate, which is on the wall. When I want you to do business excellence, it has to be practiced in within the division. The second thing was that uh, we were participating uh, as a company for the uh, 
GRDQV award, which is the equivalent of the Malcolm Baldrige. And uh, the watch division, we were already a 500 plus company. And uh, what he said was, you know, we are actually pulling down watch division because they were more established, established businesses, processes in place, but we were just about getting started. So he said, I want to, I want you to take this journey separately, start off separately, and uh, we will not uh, go jointly with watch division and let them move on and win the GRDQ award. Hmm. So that was the start of it. And that's when I got my first initiation. I think before that, probably uh, we had become, I had qualified as lead auditor for ISO 9000, lead auditor for ISO 14000. So those were the beginnings of the quality journey. Yeah, no, fantastic. I think uh, while you say that you are, you are an accidental qualitist, um, uh, so to say, but you know the, these are the qualities who make the best uh, of the of the situation because you come from a you know pure production or or that background and know what is needed from quality compared to some people who might start in quality and may only need know what quality needs right so that i you know earlier this week for example i was reviewing a project and, and i still remember what i said is that look you are trying to and this was to an internal team i had to say that look you are trying to solve your problem not the customer's problem we are here to solve the customer's problem mm-hmm. that is quality so our problem is uh, really nothing compared to what um, customer's problem is you know we are here to manage so yeah so uh, thanks thanks Amant. Uh, balaji you want to move on to the next uh, question yeah yeah, yeah. Huh? i mean i mean Can i just add something I mean, here this was a uh, yeah. yeah balaji uh, it's also yeah, yeah, important yeah. if you want to be a successful quality person or an innovation person you must know all aspects of the business if you don't know the your business inside out it's going to be very difficult for you to make uh, you know changes or identify areas where changes would be required so you need to be you need to have a uh, bird's eye view or you should have worked in most of the departments yourself so that you get a flavor or sense of you know when you go talk to them you can talk to them in their language otherwise you'll be talking a quality language and for them it'll be sounding like greek right I mean, I mean what, what a fascinating journey I mean I mean uh, Anjuman I mean last month we had someone who was a reluctant qualitist today we have someone who's an accidental qualitist but wow I mean we got them here and that that's the important bit all right uh, <laughs> well uh, just just uh, Mr. Suman just just something you know that intrigued because when uh, when we when uh, Anjuman just introduced the term qualitist I mean when he spoke about it I mean, it's 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 an honor that we have this term, you know, that we're using. I think, uh, you know, not many people know of this, and we must be the only, you know, Kimpro.com or Kimpro must be the only body in the world which actually uses this term. And that's all thanks to Mr. Suresh Rulla, okay, who took that seriously in a history of managing for quality, where Dr. Duran himself said that we need to label ourselves, right? And uh, so about, uh, you know, this term qualitist, I mean, uh, what what would what, what attributes do you think would would uh, make up a good qualitist according to you? You know because we're trying to promote and help people understand this uh, that they, uh, they need to I mean in the sense that they need to be proud about this. We need to know that we belong to a tribe that that is doing something different. So what what would be a good <coughs> qualitist according to you? And uh, <coughs> what would they need to do to to have an impact? On the world of quality and, and society in general what, what, what do you think that you know the attributes that you think of uh so basically a quality person uh, would need a lot of, lot of perseverance uh, he would need networking he would need uh, because he's got to understand he should have a good understanding of the business which is critical uh, he should be able to identify areas within the business he should be able to identify uh, areas from where they can learn, where they can uh, benchmark uh, companies, and therefore network with those companies. Uh, talk to people. Uh, talk to people outside industries. Mostly people, you know, when they uh, want to improve themselves, they talk to uh, people from their own industry within the industry and say, "Can we learn within ourselves?" But actually, both in uh, quality as well as innovation, 
you need to go outside you need to go beyond your industry uh, to some extent even look at nature sometimes uh, biomimicry which gives you a lot of insights uh, which you can actually use and uh, perseverance is required and you need to be talking the language you need to be talking the business language when talking to business leaders if you talk you know uh, quality language or if you talk you know what is written in the quality books like and you talk bookish language i don't think it'll make sense to them because business leaders want to see where is the money coming from so if you can tell them you know if we do this you know your customer satisfaction will go up or this will help you drive sales and uh, that's the language that they understand and that's that's when you will actually catch their attention but if you are talking you know we will improve processes and uh, it's say so what why should we improve processes we are doing well right now so you have to be talking their language not a quality language show me the money <laughs> show me the money yes <laughs> yeah show me the money well wow. right yeah anshuman yeah. sure sure so i think while while someone you were bringing up this topic i was reminded you know dr juran's one of you know many i would say you know very foundational observations was this triple role of of everybody you know we are the uh, provider or the the supplier we are the process and we are also the customer the whole whole thing around this and also the fact that you know he always challenged every every quality professionals to be bilingual and this bilingual is extremely important because the language is upwards is the language of business or money and downwards is the language of you know instructions and getting things done and and the things to do kind of a language so and you perfectly kind of elaborated that so so thank you very much for that um, moving on um, and, and before i do that uh, i think some questions have started coming in so guys you know obviously we are about 20 25 minutes into the show uh, let your questions come in some have already come in so thank you very much amina srikant uh, alvi uh, thanks a lot let them keep coming in uh, we will be jumping into the questions live questions in a bit right okay back to back to some questions that balaji and i had prepared uh, one is of course around quality in manufacturing is an evolved subject you know probably for at least about 100 odd years you know at least from the second and uh, world war time there has been uh, uh, fair interest in, in in developing the subject of quality in the manufacturing side that's why i say it is evolved i am not saying it is it is the end of the uh, what we need to do but it is fairly evolved um, i can see is there um worrying sound we'll move on um so there is some disturbance in the audio um apologies for that but we'll move on i think we'll we'll manage um so uh, like i said you know quality in manufacturing is involved subject but quality in services is not and again you know dr juran famously said and mr lula has also been teaching this for a while we all have observed that every company whatever be the company actually is far more services than manufacturing there is a marketing department design department you know there is a procurement department there is people department there are all kinds of services uh, you know if you are in in some consumer uh, kind of work or uh, you will have some service department you have customer sales service all these these are all service processes right? traditionally while quality is extremely well entrenched into the manufacturing one how do you bring this to the uh, to the services side which i believe um, that is 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 probably the key differentiator today you know that makes or breaks a company how do you how did titan do it and how what are your views on uh, uh, some so you know when we were uh, doing this exercise on lean Uh, at the factory, the world class manufacturing. So one of the books that we were all asked to read was "Who Moved My Cheese," right? And all of them, and and that was the time uh, where we also uh, it was said that each one of us, even if you're sitting in a factory, you need to go and interact with the customer. So as a result, what used to happen is on days of Dhanteras, you know, when uh, uh, that's the highest selling days for the in the jewelry business. the factory would be empty people from the factory would also be standing at the stores people from corporate office would be at the stores 
and uh, of late uh, we started of calling ourselves uh, you know when we started uh, about uh, the first 10 years we were saying we were manufacturers today we say we are retailers we are not manufacturer manufacturing is one of the activities but to uh, for the customer so everything the mindset is that whatever we do we are doing it for the customer so that mindset changes happened within the company so keep the customer in mind when we are doing anything what if we are making a process if we are interacting with them and uh, uh, I, i remember jacob used to tell us you know if you have one dissatisfied customer he is going to uh, tell 20 other customers that you know tanishk is bad but if you have one satisfied customer he is not going to tell any other customer that you are good so we got to make sure that we don't lose customers we have to keep trying to acquire customers and that's where that customer centricity came into the uh, business and that's how, right. that's how we, uh, you know and uh, the other thing is uh, one more colleague of mine uh, shomin uh, he was with us when we were at the factory and then he moved into retail so one of the things that he brought in he said you know in the factory we have kaizens why can't we do kaizens in the showroom you know so kaizens started into the retail and we were the one of the first to do kaizens in the retail sector and i can share with you a typical kaizen you know so uh, in the jewelry showroom i mean we have so many counters and every counter has a lock and there's a key and how are all the keys kept all in one bunch now in the morning i mean and we have to the staff has to take out the stock at night put it in the strong room and in the morning come and put those uh, stock back into the counters so you have to open you know either you got about 60 keys and you got to figure out which key goes into which lock now probably each one of us has probably got uh, house keys till up three or four so we struggle we don't know which key goes into which door to open in a house so can you imagine the time that they would take to open 60 locks with 60 keys so guys now this is a problem that was being felt by them so how the kaizen was how to identify keys the other one was you know uh, in the jewelry business uh, everybody needs a calculator because the price of gold keeps changing so when the customer asks what is the price of this product so uh, you needed a calculator but the calculators were never there when you needed them because somebody would take the calculator and disappear so the kaizen was can we fix the calculator at a place so that we know where it is so at, when customer asks what is the price i am not hunting for a uh calculator so these are the typical you know sort of kaizens what they had and uh, this is a movement which is carried on and i'm happy to share that last year we still went ahead with the kaizen mela and we did it on a virtual platform and we mm-hmm. had uh, i think 4000 uh, entries across the country across all businesses culminating with the national finals uh, where we had winners from the winner was actually from a small town baksar you know uh, in orissa so this is the sort of power that we've had and uh, this year we are extending the kaizen mela virtually to the factories also the factories while the factories have been having their uh, regional i mean that uh, kaizen mela within the factories but we said how can we bring them again on the similar lines like we did for retail on to a national platform so this is something going back from retail to manufacture normally yeah. like you said everything is from manufacturing to retail <laughs> yeah the yeah, truly really from each other that's, that's that's really nice uh you know i mean everyone who is in the field of you uh, know world of quality in india for us uh, mm-hmm. our very own dr juran is mr suresh lulla there's no doubt about that I'm just intrigued to know how how did you learn of uh, him and kimpro could you just uh, because i mean i think we are privileged to you know be under his tutelage in some way or the other but uh, he, i mean if, if someone can know how you came under under his tutelage uh, so and interacting I, i think uh, mr lula probably kimpro used to contact titan you know to come and apply for the awards and all and there have been some interactions before i came in and it's only after i moved in and took over innovation in 2012 
uh, and somebody forwarded this to me that you know there is uh, awards for innovation and improvements and all and would i be interested in applying and i think i probably made our first application in 2013 and that was where i met mr lulla and uh, i believe that every year that we've been applying we've been one of the winners uh, from this and jiggy just to tell me i don't know what you guys do but you all work away with an award every year <laughs> I mean, anyone who's been an examiner and a judge, I, I just mentioned that when we started, you know, that, that that's exactly what has always happened, All right? We we always look forward to Titan, yeah, right? Anshuman, uh... sure. Um, I, I think moving on. Uh, so I I was actually reading some questions and very tempted to get into one or two questions um, uh, from the audience. Uh, and and guys, you know, keep the questions coming in. So thank you those who have already asked. so i'll i'll bring this question up on the screen actually um so that we can read amina uh, is um, asking what challenges you faced in your journey of being a qualitist and a few of them you may consider highlighting i'm basically asking you know you've te- told us the glorious part you know the the rosy part <laughs> what are the what are the thorns on the on the road uh, that is no. something that amina wanted to know. okay so uh the challenges that i face while doing the quality as well as innovation are the same uh if you plot your people on a bell curve you know you will find few people who are attuned towards innovation and quality you will find some of them also not they complete they don't believe in this movement also quality movement or the innovation movement and the bulk are the fence sitters right so uh if by chance you encounter the people on the left side it's like hitting uh, you know your head banging your head on a brick wall uh and uh, so what uh, we have actually done is try to identify the people on the right side the people who believed in quality believed in innovation and uh, try to work alongside them and then showcase and take it out to the others and sometimes some of them were actually the head of departments so if you had these obstacles at the head of the departments then you know that uh, you know your journey is going to be a tough one very well said i think and, and i'm glad you you brought in this concept that you know the the obstacles are for any management change program whether it is quality innovation or anything else also and and i am more into it these days so even an it change program essentially the obstacles are more or less the same you know so you the usual suspects are the same uh, and some of them you pointed out so amina i hope you had your answer uh, thanks for asking and um, there's one more question we'll ask and then i'll move back to um, some of the other questions so zain has asked a question around um, and we can ignore the word three key variables so up to you one two three anything is welcome any key variables uh, to attain excellence in quality essentially asking what helps us as an organization to get to quality and he has a follow up question where he is clarifying that you know quality and business excellence as was one body so any views on this so the one of the variables is that you got to be humble and being most people think you know the we we are the best so the moment you think you are the best you are not going to try and improve so you've got to be always wanting to have a wear on a learning hat uh and uh, you know even learn sometimes learn from companies who are even in the initial stage because they may bring you some aspect which you have not considered so you actually we got to be really humble and this is something that i have learned when i have been uh, an examiner for the uh, data business excellence model and even when i was examiner for the ci exam model that even when we did companies who were not, not scoring very high there were some nuggets and all which we could bring back to our own organizations and therefore see that is critical for us to learn and no, uh, yeah. on a lighter note I, i think to the previous question you know so all of us follow the pdca but uh, i don't know mr dwarkanath had coined another term for pdca you know hmm. that some people in titan would probably see pd stands transfer please don't change anything <laughs> 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 no, no, I, 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 I've heard this before, but I think 
coming from a practitioner it has you know, amazing value so yeah so so on, on that note some of the other questions also coming in uh, so let's let's stick to some questions from the audience uh, since many are pouring in the questions uh, madhu smita nayak wants to know where you want to position yourself as a qualitist in your in the future so of course i i think madhu smita is not questioning your future career but probably asking from her own point of view as to uh, how do we see qualitist in the future so basically uh, qualitist is would be actually people who are serious practitioners of quality and you know when you say when you are practitioners of quality it need not be just at the workplace it could also be at your home uh, are you also trying to you know uh, practice quality things within your home because if you don't do it at your home place in your, in your own life you will not be you know it's like there's something i do at work but i do something completely a different at work and also it won't really gel very well you know but i have a obstacle there also because when i tell you know first in first out you know we must follow my wife said no no listen leave that to me and then when <laughs> i tell you that you must tell me you know why when uh, when you are reaching a certain value kan kan ban sort of a thing uh, uh, that you know this is only then I, we should get the replacements there's no point stocking enough material uh, food at home when you're not required so can we follow but there are i think obstacles in that but i'm trying to teach my children those things hope they learn so so sumant i i i have often you know some comment at this you know this is like what what we teach at work or what we do at work don't try this at home it comes with a warning <laughs> so you know i've been i've been trying to instill uh, 5s at home and uh, it is a challenge right so this struggle is real for 5s at home but you're right you know in a, on a on a more serious note Uh, a qualitist at work a qualitist at home everything is same you know you can't really take one out and expect others you know for example and this is a very personal observation sometimes i share with people is that uh, there are people who i come across and will say that i am extremely organized you know they are they are extremely organized but they when they take out their wallet it has uh, bus stubs ticket stubs from 20 years ago and uh, everything is there and then you know they they want to have create a picture of being extremely organized and kaizen and five s oriented it actually doesn't work it tells me more about um, people when when i see this than their actual work so so thanks thanks for bringing that in uh, uh, madhu smita i hope you had your answer since some more questions are coming in i will actually uh, switch the questions to now and then maybe towards the end we will ask one or two more of our uh, earlier prepared questions Shrikant wanted to know how do you manage your learning need to enhance new and existing quality tools. So, um, how do you manage your learning so, need? So today it's uh, very easy. Uh, there are books that we read. Uh, there are online MOOC courses are available, which uh, we can join and you know carry on and do it up on the weekends or even a free time that we have. Uh, the next is also networking. understanding from people uh, you know when i talk to people in different companies i learn what they do so this is these are the ways that we uh, and at the fourth one are consultants who keep bombarding us you know this is something new that we have done would you be interested in learning and also discussions with them and a little bit if i can add shrikant uh, you know to what suman said uh, is that you know uh, with with so much changing these days you know it is extremely important to keep learning a little bit more for example i i have recently enrolled in a innovation and design thinking one year program um and and i did that more because at some point you start realizing that you also need to practice what you preach so um, just a little example of what uh, all of us can do um sneha has a question which is slightly unrelated but maybe sumanth you want to take Uh, what so is the project, future of project management uh project management is there to stay it's not going to go away but it's probably going to evolve because even let's say when we take a, a improvement a project or let's say an innovation project project management is going to be there but the tools that we follow uh would stage gate be there or would 
let's say other tools like design thinking and all become more prevalent if humans are involved and that's what so basically we've got to keep the customer understand the pain points of the customer and design our solutions or improve our processes so that we improve the customer experience or the services that we provide to them i hope that answers your question i i'm sure it does uh, because you know it makes total sense and sneha just to add to this also that i am i'm quite involved with the american society for quality and project management institute so pmi and asq and uh, within their governing bodies also i have been reminding them for 2 3 years now that we probably need a program on quality project management uh, or a project quality management either way because these two streams quality management and project management are two sides of the same coin if we do a quality project in a year when it was expected to take us take 6 months it is of no use right if you do the project in 6 months but don't achieve the goals of the project it is again of no use so uh, you know while the subjects evolved probably through separate um, streams they are actually the same or they should become the same so that's something i've been trying to push uh, both the organizations to have a combined course or a certification or at least a body of knowledge around these two subjects uh, not successful yet but uh, i don't give up that easily so uh, so moving on there are still more questions add, okay i just want to add to what you said anshuman if so, you go to through all of dr juran's books he always ends by saying make no small plans the quality plan should be a part of the business plan and the only way to get there is project by project no other way absolutely absolutely i think you know and and the wisdom is all there uh, we are only plucking uh, some flowers and fruit <laughs> as we go along um, so suman i think uh, one very important question that you know uh, at kimpro we have been grappling with also and and we've been very keen that the quality movement should actually embrace um, this and i balaji and i want to with you a little bit on this that uh, quality has evolved you know these days to include environment and sustainability as key focus areas uh, with so much depletion of natural resources of all kinds uh, focus on environment and sustainability is is actually not even you know a fancy thing now it is almost an essential thing any views there on how do you think um, industry in general uh, or or quality can move towards green quality so and green uh, of course includes environment sustainability everything so so basically uh, uh today customers are moving towards sustainability they are looking at sustainable products there are brands who are actually uh, showcasing what the carbon footprint of the product is from the time it was conceived till the grave you know so sustainability is in a long way and we at titan are also looking at sustainable uh, uh, we are looking at introducing products made from agricultural waste in in our uh, pipeline we are looking at how we can recycle more gold rather than using fresh gold uh, so uh, we are also trying to see if we can get uh, diamonds of uh, which are uh, sustainable rather than you know mining it and therefore a def- lot of deforestation taking place so sustainability is going to stay it's a trend which is uh, going to get stronger and stronger and customers are willing to pay more for your product if they know that it's a sustainable product no and no. therefore this is going to be a movement uh, in the next 10 years is going to be key and if you actually if you ask me maybe the criteria for any award will also make sure that sustainability is a part of it it become a part for any recognition that uh, any industry would be given and and very well said suman and and i just want to remind the audience also and those who will watch the recording that uh, kimpro and the qualitist program itself has been a front runner in this because we've had a and kimpro foundation as well we've had a focus on environment and sustainability for quite some time now and uh, probably having seen how everything was moving and everything not following the trend but actually making the trend and that is extremely important now because uh, the these environmental and sustainable uh, point of views uh, are no longer some some good boardroom topics which may not actually happen 
but they are actually happening all across us with the with now organizations even offering 100% uh, recyclable product packaging and all these kind of things so so yeah sumanth i think totally agree uh, i will take one more question from the audience before i move to Anshuman, let, me, let me add something more so sure. even you know the thieves for a kaizens for the manufacturing kaizens earlier it used to be uh, product quality cost delivery hmm. then safety morale came in this year environment has also come in as the key theme you know and uh, even in our uh, innovation uh, awards at the tata group uh, sustainability has been a theme which has been there for the last 5 to 6 years correct so we okay. also look at sustainable uh, projects coming in and uh, so all companies are also focused towards sustainability and i'll just remind i think uh, good that you brought up this suman because uh, some months ago i had interviewed ravi uh, ravi aroda of uh, the tqms you know a tata group uh, setup who handles the innovation from a, at a group level and he yes. pretty much brought up the same topic so those of you who are interested in that video also i'll leave the link in the um, uh, comments uh, have a look at that uh, for more details on how um, in general the industry and of course specifically the tata group is uh, doing work around these topics so i'll take a couple of more questions and then hand over to balaji um, little bit so i have sudha has two questions if you were to define a qualitist to a layman how would you do that um, though you've tried that earlier suman but i think maybe a crisper <laughs> uh, definition <laughs> how much of a qualitist qualifies qualities do you apply to your daily life um, so sudha is getting you into trouble but uh, you are free to skip this I, question I, i think in a way i probably answered both so a qualitist to a layman would be a person who is a practitioner of quality in both their individual and the professional life okay and how much of a qualitist uh, qualities do we apply in my daily life well, i try to do a lot of it but uh, as anshuman also mentioned that you know the work environment and the home environment are very different and uh, now in the case of uh, you know the lockdown and all where there's a blur between workplace and home place to a certain extent we uh, they've understood that yes it when it's working it has to be this way so maybe there's some learning that will uh, move on you know brush off on to the home segment yeah um so sudha i hope you had your answer and of course you know if you if you see the session from the beginning you will probably get um, the answers to the first question as well but thank and, you for and, asking the question and, yeah and, and actually my friends you know they call me the question man because i keep <laughs> questioning everything you know so one of the things is as my role is to keep questioning you know to try and understand root cause so my friend jokingly say here comes the question man he will question everything that is told to him he won't take anything at face value now i think that's a fantastic way to put it and a curious mindset is you know a, a ingredient to quality you know no qualitist can succeed if he or she does not have a curious mindset if you can't ask why 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 five times you know which is one of the basic tools of quality you are never going to get to the root cause so you know you are maybe uh, very modest about it someone but this is truly a true quality practice that you know you ask why why are you doing it what is this in a couple of days ago i was in a similar program uh, and and this somebody asked me as to the the what would you look for when you are hiring uh, slightly you know middle to senior person and amongst other things i did say that uh, look while it is very popular to say that we need a problem solver i actually need a problem finder right so people who can find the problem are more critical to me today because many processes are computerized or systematic uh, to say i don't even know where the problem is right so i only know the outcome if i knew where the problem is maybe it's easier to uh, solve so it reminded your your response reminded um, uh, me of that um, so questions pouring in but uh, i think uh, time to go back to balaji balaji um, uh, you know over to you yep uh right uh suman any 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 wrap up you know one minute message that you want to give all of us an audience as far as quality qualitist 
the future is concerned anything that crosses your mind uh, so ba- ba- basically i think this is a movement which will only become stronger it's not going to get weaker and all because uh, and uh, you put to uh, uh, have an open mind be trying to look at mostly when the problem surface those are going to be probably the symptoms and therefore you will have to keep questioning to get to the root cause once you identify the root cause then you should be looking at solving those root causes and this uh, holds true both for uh, quality as well as for innovation uh, and only then can you come out with solutions which really impact the lives of the customers and that is i think what uh, you should be looking at i mean if someone ask you why are we doing this and if you cannot uh, relate it to a need of the customer or a pain of the customer i don't think you should be taking that up or you should be working on us or also if it is not going to give you any impact or benefit i don't think you should be uh, hopping on that but uh, look at and try and look at uh, you know the uh, pareto's law the 20% of the problems or 20% of the issues will give me about 80% of the impact of the outcomes i think that's where the focus should be but if you get lost in the balance 80% then you will feel that you are not making a difference and you may tend to lose interest in this area right yeah. you think that i mean yeah we need to Balaji. find problems before the problem find us yeah palaji i'll take half a minute to acknowledge uh, so um, sumant lingesh babu it seems is it works with titan and he is yeah. confirming that you know uh, what you said about being curious is absolutely right so thanks lingesh <laughs> for the validation uh, we didn't need the validation but uh, always welcome to uh, contribute so thank you for your comment uh, over to you balaji yep uh unless we have any more questions that anjuman coming in there, there are questions but some are repetitive themes uh, so for example oh, okay. i think uh, okay. dr nisha has asked a slightly interesting one it just came in uh, how about lining quality projects with sustainable development goals uh, 2030 goals which is the un uh, goals um, uh, as a basic uh, for plan so so basically uh, you know uh, these are not quality projects they are now becoming business projects for us uh so uh i remember uh, two weeks back uh, at md and all the chief manufacturing officers met in the factory and what has become a very important theme for us and how we are going to take water forward so you know these are going these are going to be business projects and not quality projects so the main thing is if you can align your quality projects in line with your business goals i think you will find that your projects will actually move forward yeah and and since the sdg the sustainable development goals are more un uh, you know i won't say sponsored but at least proposed goals eventually companies uh, will start adopting them and uh, like always tata group and specifically titan uh, is is ahead of the curve in this as well so yeah so that would be the last question i'll take balaji truly over to you now Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's it's been an absolute pleasure, um, Mr. Suman, having you here, and I'd like to thank you and of course uh, uh, the wonderful audience. Uh, I mean, we wish we could keep this going and you know answer all your questions, but I'm quite sure that uh, you could make a summary of that, uh, you know, Anshuman, and send it over to Mr. Suman, and he would definitely look into it. Uh, just to tell the audience once again, okay, that the show recordings. are available on our youtube channel and uh, we would encourage you to subscribe all right for us to do better and our next quality show would feature another giant uh, mr shailesh ghodekar from marico uh, the date and time of course would be announced uh, in the future soon so thank you all very very much and we hope to see you soon for our next uh, quality test interview Uh, till then please uh, stay safe uh, and please practice msd mask sanitizer and distancing and of course please have a great quality time ahead before we meet again thank you very very much thank you very much thank you suman thank you audience that would be thank all you, for today. thank you palaji thank you the audience and thank you quimpro for giving me this opportunity to be part of this show our pleasure sir